Hi there, YouTube. Sorry I've been out of pocket for a while. Lots of stuff going on. Today's Kingdom Melody positively reeks of musical theater ripoffs. I mean, it's difficult, the melody's pretty unpredictable, and you can just imagine it being sung by some bouffanted ingenue downstage under a soft focus spotlight. It's also got all the staples we've come to expect from a true Jehovah's Witness song. Glass-shattering high notes, superfluous apostrophes, atrocious grammar, bizarre word choices, and changes. Tons and tons of changes. This song debuted in 1984 as song number 115 and was entitled Have Intense Love for One Another. <laughs> I guess they must have realized that people who have intense love for one another tend to want to touch each other and also may have trouble turning that love off like a light switch when someone gets disfellowshipped or leaves the congregation. So, in 2009, the song underwent a complete lyrical overhaul and a title change, and it became song number 73, entitled Love Intensely from the Heart. Notice that they don't say who to love intensely anymore. That's pretty telling, I think. Then, in the 2017 songbook, the song underwent another lyrical overhaul and became song number 109. You're ready for some intensity? <laughs> All right, all right. First of all, I have questions about this intense and pure love because something seems off to me. I mean, it sounds great, but what they're saying here doesn't match what they actually practice on a daily basis. Intense love and shunning, or as they call it, disfellowshipping, don't actually go together, people. Pure love doesn't generally allow you to dump your foundational relationships out of your life for something that may or may not have anything to do with you. I mean, like smoking, or masturbation, or voting, or taking a blood transfusion, or even having too many questions about your religion. And notice the focus on endurance here. What are they enduring? Why, the consequences of their own actions, of course. For example, if you knock on people's doors uninvited on their only day off and wake them up to tell them about your religion, which basically teaches that they're going to be murdered by God if they don't join your cult, they're naturally going to be just a little bit annoyed. They may say they're not interested and close the door, or they might say, get the hell off my lawn. Either way, they're not likely to be happy to see you. Another example, if you isolate yourself from your non-Jehovah's Witness friends and family when you come into the truth, or you shun your children when they need help but get disfellowshipped instead, then you might find yourself in good standing at the hall, which means you're allowed to comment and volunteer to clean Kingdom Hall toilets and knock on doors and everything, but deeply lonely on a personal level. So, in 2009, these lines became... Love must come from deep in our hearts. There is a place of affection starts. Real fellow feeling is in parts. For all our brothers need. Oh, dear. But don't the Jehovah's Witnesses also say that the heart is treacherous? So if that's true, but love must come from our hearts, then wouldn't that logically mean that affection is also treacherous? And isn't feeling fellows a disfellowshipping offense? Okay, okay, I know what they're actually trying to say here. They mean empathy or something, I think. But only for our brothers, meaning other Jehovah's Witnesses. So we're expected to love and have affection for other Jehovah's Witnesses. Worldly people, not so much. So in 2017, incidentally, the song became only one verse long. And here's what the first lines were changed to in that version. When our love is pure and intense, we make Jehovah's heart rejoice. Love is his greatest quality, something that we hold dear. Where'd the rhyme scheme go? And notice once again that we're no longer acknowledging who we have intense love for anymore because we don't have intense love for other people, y'all. The love is directed toward Watchtower, I, I mean, Jehovah. So apparently, witnesses hold love, Jehovah's supposed greatest quality, dear. Y'all, this is news to me as a born-in Jehovah's Witness. 
the expectation to love the organization, I completely understand and remember. But there wasn't any real love for people in there. I mean, intensity, sure, there's plenty of that, but not love. Back to 1984. Jesus is our friend now. Poor guy keeps getting demoted, doesn't he? I mean, what relationship is he trying to mend? This is really confusing. So are we supposed to be uniting with Jesus or what? And I've said this a million times. I don't think the idea of redemptive sacrifice is very loving at all. In fact, I think it's kind of amoral and preposterous. So with all due respect, please don't hand me this crap. In 2009, these lines became... We will find a way to express loving intentions we possess, practicing God's light-heartedness, proving our love sincere. It's so hard to decipher. So are we trying to find a way to say that we possess loving intentions? Well, they say the road to hell is paved with good intentions, even though y'all don't believe in hell. Neither do I. You know, my mom used to tell me that one of her aunts used to say when, when she was little, when mom was little, that the witnesses might not believe in hell, but when they died, they sure were going to bust that place wide open. <laughs> anyway, if you really had loving intentions, I mean, why would it be so hard to say so? And how would we go about proving the sincerity of said love. Why would people have such a hard time believing that our love is sincere? Hmm? I, I, I think actions speak louder than words, don't they? What did Jehovah's Witnesses' actions say about their loving intentions? And don't even get me started on God's large-heartedness either. I mean, are we talking about true cardiomegaly here? Is it even possible for an imaginary being to have cardiac problems? Okay, 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 it's a metaphor, I get it, fine. But if God's got such a big heart, then why doesn't he do something about war and famine and crime and child abuse? I mean, we're talking about, if we're talking about Jehovah in particular here, why is he so harsh with his punishments? I mean, why does disobedience of the smallest rule from Watchtower have to result in complete loss of all your family and friends? Why? So in 2017, these lines were changed to warm affection glows in our hearts, making a loyal friendship grow. Love always acts unselfishly. Proving our love sincere. Oh my, oh my God. Loyal friendship with whom? Because no, you can't have a loyal friendship as a Jehovah's Witness because you're expected to report on your so-called friends at the very first whiff of disobedience. Now, I've given personal examples of this in previous videos, but here's another one. Remember me talking about those pioneers who came to stay at our house months on end? Well, there was one of them who said to me that I did not even deserve my mother and that she would take my place as her daughter. She saw a deck of cards that had been given out at the grocery store as some kind of promotion. They were in the console of my mom's car, and apparently they resembled a cigarette pack, if you'd never actually seen a pack of cigarettes up close, that is. So this lady, this sister, saw these things, and instead of asking my mom about them, this bitch, I mean... This holy and righteous pioneer sister went straight to the elders to wrap my mom out for smoking. Now, if you can imagine my mother's bewilderment at being hauled into the back room for something that did not involve me or my sister. <laughs> this bitch had been living in our house, eating our food, using our electricity, taking up space, and she couldn't even ask my mom about what she saw before going to tattle. Guys, that's not love. That's not sincere. That's just being an asshole. But let's talk about selfishness for a minute. Because I think selfishness gets a bad rap. No, no, no. Hear me out. There's a lot of hype, as a witness especially, about how important it is to be unselfish. And we should just give until it hurts. We could never have anything or any time to ourselves because we were supposed to be unselfish and long-suffering all the time. But y'all... You need to be selfish sometimes. If you don't take care of yourself, nobody else is going to do it either. Sometimes no is the right answer. As in, no, we cannot afford to give money to the Kingdom Hall this month. And no, we cannot live on one part-time job. Just no. Back to 1984. <laughs> 
the Jehovah's Witnesses always equate love with fear. Personally, I would have a hard time loving someone who I was afraid of. Fear and love just don't go together, y'all. And why do we need love on our feet anyway? Does somebody have a foot fetish somewhere? I thought that was forbidden too. And notice that we are talking about Christ's funny walk again. Man, I wish we had an example of the way Christ trod somewhere. Anyway, in 2009, this became... Generous? Really? Well, if by those in need they mean watchtower, then okay. But the Jehovah's Witnesses are not generally generous to those in real need. Maybe in some congregations they were, but it was always on an individual level. Nowhere does the congregation actually organize and sanction charity or generosity toward others. And the watchtower never does it even in their so-called disaster recovery efforts, without an angle. If they're doing something that looks altruistic, you can bet that there's some positive news coverage or a photo op there or some insurance money or maybe both. And hey, do yourself a favor and look up the elder's manual called Shepherding the Flock of God. Give it a good careful read, guys. Then come back and tell me whether these people actually do let goodness take the lead. Ever. They don't even let goodness be a factor. In 2017, they changed these lines to, When we see a friend in need, we'll be there to lend a helping hand. Truly, we can be a friend, someone who can understand. Someone who doesn't have any poetic skills whatsoever. As we know, we are only allowed to be friends with other Jehovah's Witnesses, conditional upon their standing in the organization, of course. And by lend a helping hand here, we are referring to encouragement to do more in the truth. This encouragement might consist of shaming about low field service hours, shaming over clothing or hairstyle choices, or shaming over spotty meeting attendance, or, you know, something like that. Sure, there are some good people in there who really did help their friends out, who really did try to understand things that happened in their normal human lives, but that still wouldn't stop them stone cold shunning you if you stepped out of line. They might occasionally shed a tear about it behind closed doors, but they'd still do it. Back to 1984. For crying out loud. Jehovah's Witnesses love to talk about how horrible and hateful the world is today. But y'all, it's just not true. It's all about who you surround yourself with and what you do with your life. Yes, there are shitty people out here. There are people who take advantage of you, and there are people who will act like jerks, but there are also lovely people who will be there for you and who will love you unconditionally, who won't stop talking to you just because you don't go to their church or whatever. Look, the world's a wonderful place where intense love is actually possible. But do you notice what they're doing here? The hateful world thing is obvious since they believe that they are only safe inside their little witness bubble and they're eagerly awaiting Armageddon to get rid of everyone else. But what I'm talking about is the other thing they're doing. What do you think of when you hear the word display? What is a display? Well, it's a show. It's a shop window, a vendor table at a conference or a craft fair, a dog and pony show to sell people something. A display looks good, but it's often fake, not functional. So they're displaying how loving and intense they are. They're love bombing people who they think are susceptible, but it's not real, y'all. And can somebody tell me what a surpassing way is? To surpass is to exceed or to be greater than something. So what are we surpassing here? This doesn't make any sense. I mean, there's nothing to measure against. So 
I don't get it. And why are we copying God? I mean, this sounds like we're either counterfeiting deities or we're little kids trying to annoy each other. Stop copying me. Stop copying me. Anyway, in 2009, this became... Honor and respect whom exactly? Certainly not any women, that's for sure. And notice the display again. We're making sure that we appear to be honorable and respectful, showing kindly concern, though I think their phrasing here is a little awkward. Especially the line about not betraying our brother's faults, because it can be read several ways. As I've said, and as you know, if you spend any time as a Jehovah's Witness, they're conditioned to betray any hint of a fault to the elders immediately. So this line's just a damn lie if you read it that way. But you could also read it as, we don't air our dirty laundry to the outside world, starting with anything like domestic violence or child sexual abuse being reported to the authorities. And I think that's a little closer to what they mean here, judging from the last two lines. Because there's two very loaded words here for Jehovah's Witnesses. Loyal and unity. Now, as we've discussed before in other videos, loyalty and unity both carry significance for witnesses and both refer to the organization, not the people, not the individuals. Jehovah's Witnesses are loyal to Watchtower, not each other. And their unity means everyone being obedient and compliant with Watchtower rules to a fault. Because the worst thing a Jehovah's Witness could do would be to show a crack in the unity to be disloyal by making the organization look bad. Does anybody still have any doubts about whether this is a cult or not? Anybody? So in 2017, this became, Jesus showed what love really means, helping us see Jehovah's love, touching our hearts and moving us. Tender feelings are a start. Love intensely from the heart. If we're looking at the example of Jesus, love would really mean obedience, even if the given task is pointless and illogical and really kind of amoral. You know, Jehovah's love just doesn't look very loving, y'all. Sending his son to be tortured to death so that he can forgive his other children for being the way he created him. Mass killings over and over and over, if you believe in the Bible, and promises of still more mass killings at Armageddon and after the thousand-year reign. I mean, there's tons of examples, so I'll pass on the Jehovah love. Thanks anyway. So, let me get this straight. From this verse, we are supposed to be touched by the idea of Jesus obeying Jehovah and getting tortured to death, but not by our children asking for help because they've been abused, or by our friends and relatives who've been disfellowshipped for some stupid thing or other. I mean, what the hell kind of tender feelings are they talking about? Because it seems like all tender feelings are likely to do for you as a Jehovah's Witness is get you in trouble, especially if they're of the romantic variety. Might as well forget about that. What I'm hearing is that these people actually have no idea about love, intense or otherwise. As I said, in 2017, there's only one verse. So from here on out, there's only going to be 1984 and 2009. Back to 84. Love that is coming, pretense, gives all reasons for. The f so we're talking about two love here. No mere pretense, not like, say, a cult that wants to have a certain image. I mean, <laughs> okay, no reason for offense. None ever. Y'all, that's ridiculous. Look, I love my husband to the ends of the earth. I mean, I adore that man. But you know what? There are times when he offends me, and I'm sure the feeling's mutual. Absolutely certain of it, actually. <laughs> Love doesn't mean that you never argue or disagree or get offended. It doesn't mean that you never screw up. Love means that you care when you do, and you try to fix it. And what is this bullshit about true deference to our brothers, dear? Because once again, all of this refers to the brothers, and they're not talking about your siblings here. Because if they were, they'd call them fleshly brothers anyway. Because anytime they say brothers, they mean Jehovah's Witnesses. To defer, as it's used here, 
is to allow someone else to decide or choose something. So here it is. They're flat out saying that Jehovah's Witnesses are supposed to defer to the brothers, a.k.a. the watchtower, the governing body, to allow the brothers to make decisions and choices for them. How the hell is that okay? That is not okay. Now, somebody must have called them out on that, or else they realized how very cultish it sounded, because in 2009, it was changed to... When our love is pure and intense, we will be slow to take offense. Reason we have for confidence in our brother's room. We should not be offended when the brothers make decisions for us or butt into our private lives then, please. And again, grammar. Reason we have. I mean, <laughs> it's like they had Yoda trying to write song lyrics. But seriously, they don't say what reason we have to be confident in these supposedly true brothers. I mean, how do you how do you define a true brother anyway? I mean, it's not by blood, obviously. I mean, I guess you define them by their meeting attendance, their field service hours, and whether or not they're reaching out in the congregation or whatever. And let's get real, nobody cares about the sisters. even tries to confine love to themselves. I mean, have you ever heard of anybody doing this? Nope, I only love myself. <laughs> Come on, why do they even need to say that? Or are they trying to say that love should not be confined only to Jehovah's Witnesses? Nah, that can't be right. Anyway, it sounds stupid. And speaking of stupid, the superfluous apostrophes have joined us again at last. But notice these last two lines. According to this song, true love puts all grievances behind toward those who God fear. Who is God afraid of, Watchtower? Oh, they mean toward those who fear God. Why can't they just say what they mean? Who did Jehovah's Witnesses say fear Jehovah the most? Well, the governing body, of course. The elders, the men in charge. Okay, so we are supposed to love these controlling and put all grievances toward them aside. So even if the elders blamed you for being abused and told you to wait on Jehovah, you're supposed to let that go. And then if they disfellowshipped you unfairly, let that go too. And if your only means of support got disfellowshipped and your marriage went to hell as a result, well, you can't hold a grudge. You must have deserved it or else the spirit-directed elders wouldn't have made that decision in the first place because those decisions come directly from Jehovah, didn't you know? Really? Let's see what they did in 2009. Loyal friendship refers to friendships within the Jehovah's Witness congregation where all parties are loyal to the watchtower, not each other. And while I have no problem with appreciating my friends, I draw the line at pleasurably congregating. Ugh. For some reason, this activates my gag reflex. Back to 1984. Yes, the ever-approaching final day of Armageddon, which has been just around the corner for well over a hundred years now. But when they say that their love must expand toward humanity, 
they don't mean actual love, people. They mean their particular and very limited variety. Trying to convince as many people as possible to join the Jehovah's Witnesses and learn what conditional love feels like. Word to the wise, it feels shitty. Really, really shitty. And in 2009, this became... And we know that their God only loves witnesses, so anybody want to guess what this really means? God need magnifying all the time? Is he really that small? And I love how they talk about strengthening bonds with constancy. I guess if you never see anybody else, you can't have a relationship with anyone else, can you? No way. If you're talking about sacrificing my children, no effing way. And if you're talking about shunning people for disagreeing with you or protecting abusers because you don't want to look bad in front of others, well, to hell with that too. I think I like worldly love better. People who show kindness and love regardless of whether you agree on everything or not. People who cheer for you. People who laugh with you and cry with you and who you can trust to do the right thing no matter who is or isn't watching. Yep, I'll take that kind of love any day.